of Partnerships at the Blog Association of Kenya. I'd say Beck, uh, he'll correct me, and is also the founder and CEO of uh, the news website, hapakenya.com, and a digital marketing company, Omadai Media. Omadai has extensive experience working in the digital media, digital marketing, and in the digital rights space. He has also been involved in efforts to promote digital content creation in Kenya. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, please welcome James Omadai. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you, Sami, for that uh, fantastic introduction. Um, and um, I'm, really ha I'm really happy to be here, um, you know, and to see all of you, especially Josiah. Um, I was, you know, um, I've, been, <clears throat> I've been to your club before, um, I think back then. Back then, I think Josiah was the president. So anyway, um, thank you so much. Um, you know, thank you so much, Sammy, for the invitation. Um, and um, I'm really, I'm really happy um, to be here, and especially to be talking about uh, digital. For me, um, digital is everything. In the sense that, um, you know, obviously pays my bills, but also I've seen how um, it, it has transformed. Um, you know, it has transformed marketing has transformed even government, it has transformed uh, how people communicate, uh, how people consume content. And for me, um, you know, I mean, for, for me, for me, I'm always happy, for me, I'm always happy to have, um, you know, I mean, a conversation about digital. So um, how did I get started? So um, I'm a trained accountant. So uh, when I was growing up, I, I, you know, I wanted at some point, uh, and then um, I changed. So I, my, my dad was an accountant and I really, okay, so I'm really good at math, you know, so let me try this out. So after, after and did, you know, my CPA uh, and then, uh, I did practice for some, um, you know, for a few years. Now, while I was practicing, I mean, accountant. I, I mean, being an accountant is very boring. As in, as in, it's like doing the same thing. It's it's not it's not actually like it is doing the same thing over and over again. Um, and it can be fulfilling if you have a really good boss. I had a really really horrible one. Uh, and at some point I started now thinking about, you know, how I'm going to exit this particular company because, you know, I mean, I wasn't happy. And I, as I was thinking about my exit, um, I discovered, um, uh, I discovered, I discovered Facebook. And that was key because I've been trying, you know, for a very long time. Um, to share my, my work, my writing. I'd been writing since I was eight years old, but then I couldn't get anywhere to, you know, to push this content. So when I discovered Facebook and then uh, especially a feature called Facebook Notes, um, that was really, really awesome because I started now sharing my work and then people started, people started noticing. Then after that, um, uh, something unfortunate happened. I got I got kicked out of um, of Facebook uh, for some weird reason, and then um, I met. I, I mean, at that time, I didn't even know. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know how to navigate the internet. Well, for me, the internet was Facebook. That's it. So I met someone who was a blogger, um, the only blogger I knew at the time, uh, and his name is uh, James Morua. So, and so I asked him. So. You know, so I've been publishing articles, or articles or rather, I've been publishing stories and poems on this platform, but then I was kicked out. I had to set up another account, you know, but this platform clearly is not very friendly. So, what, I mean, what do you suggest I do? I mean, I'm feeling like I want to stop ETC. Um, and, and he was like, you know, yeah, definitely don't stop. Um, 
and and also he started telling me about how the platform was um you know very limiting um in the sense that um in the sense that only your friends can read you know what you're publishing and so i started and and so he told me just go and start a blog and you know start a blog i did um I think my first blog was called ramadai.blogspot.com dot blogspot.com i think it still exists i think um and at the time when i started out you know basically what i was doing was you know was was the very same thing i was doing on facebook which is basically um you know short stories um you know short story uh, short stories and short stories and poetry um for some weird reason i joined twitter um and the brand started becoming bigger um like for some reason I, i'm i'm not quite sure and what happened was that you know i started getting other people to i started i, I started um receiving requests from other people uh, for them to publish their work on my website then i thought hey, okay this 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 thing is serious i decided ah, let me just buy the domain um instead of you know using the free version um and then let's see where this goes so i bought the domain um so amadai.com and you know i started getting getting like you know all these people um you know wanting to publish i mean it was it was quite interesting to see especially if you think about so this was um around 2000 i think 2009 2010 and at the time we didn't have like a lot of kenyan content and sites like mine were becoming a bit popular because people could could come and and find content uh cre- content a uh, kenyan content created by kenyans at the time on the most of the most of the kenyan content was was online was created by foreigners or it was just you know i mean probably like newspaper articles etc and their websites are really terrible by the way so anyway um at um at um at some point um at some point i started doing as as a point i started doing events um i think that's around the time uh, i met i met i met sami uh, and and also um also interesting happened um we started having conversations between blog on how um to ensure that young bloggers who come through um you know are taught you know that of you know digital content creation such that when they're starting out it's going to be very easy for them and that conversation um actually led um to around 40 of us uh, forming what is what is called the blog blog station of Kenya and the base and when we started out basically what we what we actually wanted was to to get as many people as possible to create an only form and also people um and brands who are trying to start out um you know on you know as far as online content creation is concerned um so i did so i did events like i mentioned so the events were around poetry it, it, it was basically poetry so poetry and music so i did them for i did them for about 3 years and then i got bored um of the of the creative you know space poetry and stuff um and something else as far as uh, content especially content creation is concerned so i just set up um a lifestyle um I have the website called um, Hapa Kenya Hapa Kenya uh, .com um but, well for me I you know I kind of felt that um the creative the creative side of the, I did type of yeah. is technology like um space was that um online content creators especially 
ones, uh, the ones that run, um, you know, websites that do news, um, um, you know, are important conduits for some of their stories. Uh, I remember around that time, um, it was very difficult. Um, those of you who are in media, uh, it was very difficult, or PR, it was very difficult at that time for a blogger to get a press release. Um, it was unheard of for a blogger to be invited to an event. It was like, it was like completely unheard of. Obviously now it's like commonplace, but back then it was something that just so it was very interesting to to find companies that were interested, you know, in working with, um, you know, these people, not just bloggers, but also influencers. So let's just call them digital content creators. And what happened was, um, I think, I think the first client I think was 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 Samsung, Samsung or Nokia. I'm not sure. Although although both are pioneers as far as this particular thing is concerned, and I was, you know, I was very very surprised. To, you know, they gave us phones and then, and then, you know, we, you know, we reviewed them, ETC. Obviously, this is, this, this is, you know, that, um, you know, offline media, offline media could not um, at the time. Offline media at the time uh, didn't, at the time didn't, didn't, didn't have people who are like really knowledgeable uh, or, um, on, on, um, on consumer electronics. Uh, and especially, actually, phones, phones, phones. So what they would do is that they would get the press release and just like publish it. So as now we could do a review, etc. So it was different. It was different. Um, and and the most interesting interesting thing at the time is that also uh, people were actually making purchasing purchasing decisions based on. Know, some of those views. If you said, um, I think we started with the S2. So if you said the S2 has a problem with a camera or whatever, I mean, people would definitely not go out and buy it. Um, you know, but thank God, at least it was a really cool phone. Um, you know, and that really helped. Um, you mean, and that really helped as far as marketing is concerned. I find that um, the strategies that some some employed um, using online content creators are being used by, you know, by companies such as now, by companies such as um, uh, Techno, uh, Vivo, um, Nokia, now the quality HMD, um, you know, and it was quite, it was quite, it was quite something, um, especially at the time. So anyway, um, at point, um, you know, I mean, I had, I had so much experience like working with, I realized I had so much experience working with uh, brands um, and then uh, and then also, you know, people at Blue started calling me and asking me, you know, I mean, how can I be, how can I be able to um, take this brand, you know, and push it online, ETC. So I decided to, uh, because of that, I decided to, um, you know, form my own uh, agency media and basically what what that is it does is basically one is just connect my content creators this is like so it could be i mean it could be campaigns it could be um events um but the, but the cracks is um i mean sorry the connection is uh, that all those campaigns or, or whatever they to have has to has to I think in the same conversation, you know, to, you know, some like like um, you know, people travel somewhere, take video, TC, and then share them over a period of time, um, you know, stuff like that. Um, I mean. Um, you know, Bake was growing. The Blogger Association of Kenya, we call it Bake in short. Um, it was, we, 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 we kind of figured out that, you know, um, online content creators in Kenya are not really, so we did something called the Bake Awards to sort of like try and 
shine a spotlight on these content creators in the sense that at least through this, they can be able to be fast celebrated and also they can be able to be known just by that, um, you know, people have, you know, gone ahead and blown up PTC. Uh, funny story. Um, I actually didn't know this is uh, before she was nominated for the, uh, for the big awards. I think it's a long time ago. Uh, and the, the year she was nominated, the year she was nominated, first nominated, she was, she never won actually, but Funny enough, she got a contract, um, you know, from from Samsung, and uh, the rest, as they say, um, is history. Um, and and you know, also along the way, um, you know, I discovered something called um, digital rights. In essence, uh, digital rights um, are the rights that you know people enjoy. Um, in 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 essence, these are like human rights online. In Kenya, we've had, um, as far as the online space is concerned, I feel that we've had, um, we've had space to like, um, you know, express ourselves. But unfortunately, um, there have been people who are, you know, who have been targeted. You know, I think, in my opinion, um, you know, Robert Alai, I think he is, uh, I think is is the most arrested online person. Um, in Kenya. I mean, forget his politics. I'm just saying that most of the times that he's been arrested and most of the times that most of these online, um, you know, content creators or whoever, or just on or people who create content online, uh, most of the time they've been arrested. It's on frivolous charges and it, it's on things that, you know, powerful people have decided, have, that powerful people have decided that, you know, this speech is, you know, is not allowed. Mind you, it's not illegal, but they've decided it's not allowed, and so they they use, you know, they use certain laws, even obscure ones, um, you know, to be able to, um, you know, to be able to silence these people. Um, and so a journey, uh, so my so my, so my journey, my journey on digital rights, um, you know, was awakened uh, or rather started um, f- from the realization that. Um, bad as you know in neighboring in neighboring countries but still it is still important for people to express themselves you can't be a content creator if you're not uh if you if you're not feeling free if, if you're not free from um intimidation um you know censorship even so even even rather intimidation sometimes can lead. so anyway um so through that, um, you know, done like a lot of work around, um, you know, trying to get fast lawyers, um, you know, to be able to like understand um, what this space is. I mean, it was a tragedy before, I think, I think maybe um, around, I think seven, eight years ago, um, someone was arrested and we were trying to get a lawyer for them. Um, and uh, the, so, so the lawyer, so lawyers at the time, you know, didn't really understand what um, digital rights are because I, I, ideally, what digital uh, are the same right to enjoy o- offline. You should be able to enjoy online. So those are very huge disconnect. And most, I, f- I found that um, most of the lawyers who um, wanted to help us were around, um, were doing um, human rights, and for them, the internet. It was Facebook and WhatsApp, and it was it was it was um, it was a very difficult conversation. So we did a whole um, you know training workshop to be able to train a bunch of lawyers so that they can be able to understand this. And I'm happy to report that um, in a case where we've where, where we've taken um, you know a parliament, the AG, and a bunch of other people to court because of the cyber crimes law. Um, one of the people who um, who is representing us um, is a product is a product of that um, you know is a product of that uh, you know training workshop that we did sort of like upskill lawyers um, on digital rights um, you know and you know and basically human rights online. So um, the, I mean there's a, I mean I, I mean there's a lot to say. Uh, you know, but I'll stop.
um, you know, my personal experience is concerned and speak on, uh, or rather my, my past is concerned and speak on, um, you know, definitely, you know, what you all came here to uh, talk about, which is basically opportunities for content creators um, and, um, and brands. Um, about, um, uh, about, uh, uh, about, about, I think 50 or 60 years ago, um, a brand was born. Uh, so that brand, uh, is called White Cup. So if you know me, you know like that, um, that brand, um, is quite interesting in that it has, you know, it has, you know, so many admirers, but then you know, the brand was, you know, kind of not dead, but like inactive, like people were not like about it. And about, about, I think two, um, about, I think three, three years ago, the, the company decided, okay, we, we want to, we want to, we want to change, we want to change this and and obviously, because that is, um, you know, I mean, it's growing old. We want to like try and see how to, to try and see how to refresh, um, try and refresh the brand. And the very first thing they did, um, all the influencers, you know, even people who actually don't drink beer, uh, it was it was a complete and total fail. Now they went back to the drawing board. Um, and decided, okay, so, I mean, ha we want, we want to reach a certain demographic. We want to, we want to, you know, sell this, we want to sell this product to them, even though maybe some of them are not able to right now, but we want to try and see, we want to try and see like what, uh, you know, want to try and see like what, you know, what we can do. So this time they changed tact. So they said, what you're going to do instead of um, using just influencers, what you're going to do is that you're going to use influencers that are known to drink this, to use this particular product. So they went and did that. And um, two years into it, um, the campaign was, you know, a, you know, did success. And when, when that brand is mentioned, as in all those influencers are mentioned beside the brand, um there's also the case of i remember um you know safaricom and um uh and and you know the late bob colimo so he came he came into you know he came into i mean you know into the company um, he was a director before but he came into the company and at the time is when when he came you know he became ceo um, I remember that that's the time, you know, like, like from a Kenyan perspective, as that's the time, you know, those, those like a digital, like a wave coming, you know, as in the, the fiber optic cables, you know, are here. He just started doing Google Ads, etc. Et so you could feel, but Safaricom was nowhere. I mean, the, 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 they, they, they practically just had like, um, just accounts, uh, pages, and nothing was going on. So he came in, and uh, you know, and I remember. Um, I think this was a year after his appointment. I remember he, he, you know, he, he asked his people, like, you know, like what, what's going on? Obviously, this is um, anecdotal. Like, what's going on? I mean, how come you guys are not aren't doing this? And then now they just scramble to just find, uh, you know, people they can work with agencies in DC. And and I remember at the time one of one one of the, one of the because he was very big on Twitter, uh, the man. Uh, so he asked whether he could meet the top uh, influencers and also the and the top bloggers. And at the time, he he started to you know I mean. Um, um, you know, it was called the meeting at the time. He he just he just said, "How can how can you help? Um, or rather, how 
work together so that we can um, we we can make you know we can make this brand um, brand better. And I'll tell you, um, I think as we sp I think speak now, um, since then I has been the biggest uh, you know supporter or um, what is that thing called? I mean. Safaricom uses um, influencers, online people, like, uh, online um, in, in, in all its campaigns. And what, what I think that what, when one of the things that that has done for the brand is that the brand is actually the, the top one, I think, after KCB um, online in Kenya uh, because obviously um, of, you know, um, in, also I think it's a really top down approach. Uh, this person actually, this person actually um, uh, cared about cared about you know new technology and then pushed for. Um, there's a there's a guy on on the content creator side. Um, there's a guy. Um, he's a friend of mine. His name is. Um, Rob most of most of him most most people know him as uh, as me uh, I, I met him in the online space we uh, we founded big together uh, but Muigi most importantly is a for the longest time uh, for the longest time we knew him as you know as as that person who could create a lot of content um, you know about cars but he but he was um, you know, but he was, I mean, but he was relaxed. I mean, he chose, um, you know, he to do other types of content. But because he, he kept on sharing, he kept on sharing, uh, sharing, you know, um, you know, stuff about cars on your social media, brands knew that in case I ever want to do anything, um, in case I ever want to do anything with cars, and he became the very first person I remember. Um, uh, this, this it, I mean, it was a while back, I can't remember. He became the very first person. First person. Involved. What is called a 360 campaign. So basically it was with Nissan. Uh, and they were doing five new cars. And the basic idea drove all these cars Basa, uh, to somewhere in northern Kenya that I cannot remember. And, you know, this thing online, it was on TV, to build those papers, DC, blah, blah. And the only reason that he 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 became that, and he, or rather he, he was able to get that opportunity, because he was known as a he was, he was, you know, I mean, he was creating content. He was, um, no, no, it's, uh, when I, sorry, um, let me clarify. So, so, some, so he was not blogging about, you know, cars, um, and he he was not, you know, producing long long content, and if he should have, but he was producing a lot of um, short form content on Twitter and Facebook, basically talking about the new car, this new car, etc., etc., and he became known as that person, and so the point here is that. As a, as, a, as, a, as a content creator, um, as, as someone who wants to be a, um, you know, a content creator, it is, it is, it is good you know, to be known for something, um, be it technology, be it, um, uh, be it um, lifestyle stuff, be it photography, it is opportunities. And, um, you know, people who are people who are known for something. On the other, you know, on the other side, um, I find, you know, I find that brands obviously now, um, you know, things are better in the sense that when you sit down with PR people, when you sit down with marketing people, when you sit down with C and digital, they understand. Um, understand um you know they understand the impact of it 
unfortunately, you know, the, the, the some some brands, you know, the potential, but they're very very slow to adapt. But on what I've seen the last ten years, I mean, it's really a matter of time. And then it's for COVID um, has forced in so many digital in the sense that even digital terms uh, are digital um, and a lot of you know i mean this thing is digital and and so i feel that this is probably not the shift that we you know that i would have wanted um you know or other people in the space would have wanted but i feel that i think this brings the idea that you know have you know around 22 million Kenyans who can access the internet, 10, 10 million people on, on WhatsApp, two million on Facebook. Um, you know, and um, and about I think maybe fifteen M who read content online um, on other platforms. So it just shows you that this is you know obviously a digital conversation that that is for now rather than you know it's a it's a long-term project that you know you, a brand you know will attach to at some point um but also i feel that uh, you know i mean they need to stop you know that 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 is offline and then there's online in my opinion it needs to marketing market everywhere you where your people are if you if it's if it, if it uh, um you know i mean pr your way offline online i mean it should be it should be um you know i mean it should be um i mean it should, um online and offline should be fused in a way um in a way that um, as long as, um, you know, obviously the target audience is the people that you want to read news or whatever, are on the, then you need, um, you know, then you need to, um, you know, then you need to invest and be on that platform. Now, I'll still have 20 minutes and uh, my 20 minutes have expired. So...